Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Bay. Um, thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Uh, if you guys like what you're seeing so far, please don't forget to, su to, to subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up. So we're going to just jump right into the video here. I have this framed sign that I had for a while. I really didn't have any use for it. So what I'm going to do here is create a 3D Easter sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is just gut everything out all the way down to the frame because that's pretty much what I need for, for this project here. All right, everyone, so now that I have everything gutted, I'm just going to just coat this frame with two, with two coats of my linen white, my Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. Yes, I love this color. I'm using it again. Um, just like I mentioned before in my previous videos, I am just redecorating my house, so I'm just trying to stick with the color theme. And um, this is pretty much the color that I'm, <laughs> it's pretty much the color that I've been using, but I, I love my Vestalian white chalk paint, okay? All right, so I'm just going to give this frame here two coats of the chalk paint. Okay guys, so I'm just set my frame over to the side and here I'm going to be using these painsters that I have left over from Home Depot. Um, I have some already in my stash so this is why you guys are seeing the Home Depot brand, the, the printed brand um, obviously. And then also I had to, I have a couple more packs from the Home Depot that I had to run out and get. And um, I'm just going to coat these guys with the bare antique wax. So this was um, pretty easy to do and I, I'd rather use the antique wax or just wax period because I can just rub it on, wipe it off and it's like dry completely, dry really quickly also. So that saved me a lot of time. All right, so now that my frame is fairly dry, it was dry to the touch, which I wanted, but I didn't let it like cure 100%. And the reason why is because I wanted to go in and do a little wet distressing. So sometimes I like to do the wet distressing because it makes the piece a little softer. So this is why I just went in with that. And then not only that, I didn't have to wait too long for the paint to cure because I knew I was going to take a lot of it off so this was pretty much just very easy and time saving for me just to get this project done. Alright guys so here I'm just laying down my wooden planks they were already stained with the wax and um, I cut them down to size. So here I'm just doing my layout and then I'm going to start with the two end pieces because there there is like a fair gap in between some of the wood blocks here. So I figured that I would just start with both ends first and then I can easily lay out everything and have all of my planks or my my painted stick planks smooth. 
and level. And so all of my planks are glued down. I love the way the layout came out. I love the stain, it's so beautiful. <laughs> so I almost, I did not really want to cover it, but I'm like, okay, I just can't have a plain sign. So um, here I'm just going to go in with this cute little Easter sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I just need the sign from off of this piece here. So I'm just going to go in with my I think I used effort okay yeah so <laughs> I just went in with my um, my pliers here and I just lift up the sign just attached it from the back piece here and um, as I was you know taking the sign apart one of my tags had wind up like getting bent I tried to reuse it but I couldn't so I just found some little rounds that I had left over in my stash I painted those rounds black and just set them to the side, let them dry as I just finished up glue, hot gluing my side down here. Okay guys, now that my sign is glued in place, I'm just taking these cute little carrots that I got from the, also the Dollar Tree and I love the way these carrots look however they're picked so I don't need the, the wooden pig at the bottom and then also you guys will see that I'm going to remove those like little paper greenery I thought that was like yeah it was it was pretty boring and I wanted to you know liven up my 3D sign a bit so I just went in with some box wood that I had left over from the holidays uh, just inserted the uh, boxwood inside of my foam carrot and I was pretty happy with the way that came out. All right, you guys, so now that my carrots are looking good, I'm going to just set them in place here. Uh, I did want it to use three. However, I only bought one pack, so I just wound up going with two. And um, <laughs> so I glued down my carrots onto my um, frame here, and then I just made a couple, a couple shoestring bows. I thought it would be super cute, it would enhance the carrots just a little bit. So I just went in with my shoestring bows and then also I'm just gluing down my wooden bow tack onto the corners of my side. All right, you guys, and this is how my piece came out. I'm so happy with this. I love it, I swear, I love it so much. It came out way better than I thought it would. All right, so moving on to my second spring project here. I had this Atticus in my stash also for a while now. Um, I did use the uh, beads that came on here. You guys, you'll see the natural beads. I have the navy blue, the yellow, the green. This also came with red too, but that's already packed away in my Valentine's stash. So um, yeah, um, I took these beads here off the abacus and then you know I didn't want to throw this out because I knew I was going to find something to do with it so the first thing I'm going to do here is just remove all of the metal rods from the frame here and then I'm just going to tighten up the frame just to bring it back to its original structure
all right so now that my frame is back to the original structure i just went in with some hole filler or compound from dollar tree and um, i just had to fill in the holes on each side of the frame here All right, so there I am, busting out the chalk paint. So, <laughs> also, I'm going to bust out the turntable. <laughs> I started to paint this here, and then I'm like, wait a minute, get the turntable, because I would have been touching all over this piece here. So, you guys, I just went in and gave this frame two coats of chalk paint. All right, so while my frame is drying, I just went with my natural beads that I ordered from Amazon, and I have this twine wire. So this this twine that I'm messing, up, <laughs> this twine that I'm I have here in my hand is actually the wire. You can like tell by the structure at the bottom. So I just went in with my beads. I think I did about 16 beads for the top top portion of my wire bead. All right, so now that my piece is dry, you guys, so this was just like a, a little accident. So I didn't want to distress. That's what it looked like I'm doing here. <laughs> but I did not want to distress. I was, there was something going on with the chalk paint. It was kind of like, I don't know, it was like really thick and it wasn't, you know, smooth as it usually comes. I don't know, maybe it was the paintbrush I used. I, I'm not sure. But, so, what I was doing here was just trying to smooth down some of those, like, rough edges where there was, like, excess paint. However, I had to do this so much that it looked like I'm just distressing, which I didn't do. So, what I decided to do is just go in with my antique, my antique wax here, and just to pretty much try to cover up the areas where a lot of the paint came off from from my, you know, accidental distressing. All right, you guys, so I have this basket here that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, Funny story, I bought this basket for a different project, but I wind up using it for this one here. The thing is, this basket was white <laughs> when I started off, so I did have to go in and I spray painted it black, and then I don't know if you guys could really tell, but as I was connecting my beads onto the basket, some of the paint was starting to chip off, so that was like getting me really frustrated. So had I known I was going to make this project ahead of time, I would have just gotten a black basket, you know, just a FYI or whatever basket you guys want to use. But yeah, this was like really frustrating because the paint was just like chipping away. So once my my basket was connected at the top, 
I felt like it needed a little more something at the bottom so I just added about four more beads to the bottom of the basket just to you know just give it a little more visual interest All right, you guys, so I had this foam wreath in my stash for a while now. Um, I didn't have any use for it. I'm just pretty much using it for scrap foam. So what I'm gonna do here is just cut it down to size, get it to fit in my basket properly. And then um, once, once I do that, I just went in with my reindeer moth. Just to cover up the foam a bit, I wanted to hide that red that I, that I saw that was popping through. So, once I had my reindeer moss on the foam, I just went in with some florals that I had left over from from my last projects and covered it up. I also had used some coconut liner just to cover up the bottom of the basket. And I hope you guys like the way this project came out. I love it so much. And uh, please like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.